Thank you.
I've been young and now I'm old. But guess what? I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor have seen God begging for them. That's my experience this morning. That God is good and He is He's so wonderful. God is so awesome. We used to sing a song long ago, when I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he has done for me, my very soul cries out, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Now the songwriter says, where would I be if Jesus didn't love me? Where would I be if he didn't care? Where would I be if he didn't sacrifice his life for me? But oh, is that your testimony this morning? Oh, I'm glad. So glad he did. Hallelujah. Somebody say, bless the Lord. The fact that you're here this morning and sitting down and being able to praise God is a testimony to God's delivering power. It's a testimony to God's miraculous power. It's a testimony to God's love for you, even when we did not deserve it. Even then, we went up we astray from his will. God has been good to us. God has been so good. God has been so, so good. Hallelujah. I, I, I just can't cease to, to praise God. You know, my, my, my life has been one of continuous miracles. When challenges have presented itself, God has showed up in such miraculous ways confounding the natural phenomena of life, confounding people at every walk of life, and, and, and God just shows himself to be strong. He says, I'm the Lord who heals all your diseases. God is our deliverer. Hallelujah. I don't know what you're going through this morning. I, I'm going to be preaching in a while. But I want you to know, I don't know what you are going through but what I do want you to know is that God is more than enough. God is not just a challenger, but God is your overcomer. You know, this morning I, I, I got up and very early this morning I went to do some prayer walk. I went to do a prayer walk that we walked for a few miles and just the day before the presence of the Lord. And, as I back to that journey, and, and this is not tied to the message, but I just want to share this. God, 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 the Spirit of the Lord began to minister to me. As the Spirit of God began to minister to me, minister to me concerning the exodus or the departure of the children from the land of Goshen, in Egypt where they reside. And God had sent to Pharaoh, God raised up Moses, who grew in the lap of luxury and royalty. He was being groomed to be the heir apparent to the, in fact, he was the heir apparent to the throne. And uh, Nefereti, who was his adopted mother, she had great clout, political clout and other lives. And then Moses, he saw that the people of God were being oppressed and he stepped in, bit out of turn and he killed the man and it was stolen and he had to run for his life. But in the midst of that, we see that God was in that situation. And I found out that there are times when we take a wrong turn even though when we mean well and it lands us in trouble, but God takes that trouble and works it for our good. Are you going to be in this morning? He meant well. He was in the will of God. He was chosen by God to be a deliverer. God supernaturally preserved him. God allowed his mother to put him in a basket dark with tar and slime. And he went down the bulrushes, down the river Nile, as it were. And he escaped and evaded the, all the predators that lurked in that river. And he just went to the correct place where the correct woman was at the correct point in time with the correct attitude. Come on, in the correct location. And she saw him and she had the correct heart, a and she reached out even though she was supposed to kill him like the other the Israeli children had died this one was special I want you to know that God has a back upon you that even though you be floating around in life hallelujah and you just hoping for a resting place hoping for somewhere to be rescued for a good break in life for somebody 
cause you to be afraid and to be fearful. God may have healed your body, but you see some symptoms emerging again. And the enemy say to you, it is that thing kicking up again. The devil is a liar. I want you to know when God does a thing, it's well done. All some person God delivered them from drugs and from a broken life. And there is a pull upon their life to track them back. There is the drug beat the books that are coming behind you to take you back in bondage. But I want you to know Jesus is your deliverer. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And you are born in a conquering Christ. Pharaoh's army, they were coming at with rapidity, with great speed, with great expedition, with great purpose, and they were resolute in their determination to take the Israelites back to wipe out as many as they could and destroy Moses. We are going to put Moses firmly in this place. And the people, they heard the beating of the host behind them. And when they got to the water, the water's edge, they began to cry out fear overtook them. But God gave Moses the run of leadership. And Moses stretched forth his run and touched the water. And the water parted out. Ladies and gentlemen, I said to you this morning, over two million people crossed the Red Sea that day. I taught in my mind because I used to think that and it was just a matter of minutes that they got through. But I want you to know it took perhaps a couple hours for them to go through there. But in the Red Sea being parted, the water being piled up on every side, and over one million to two million people going across that sea, and they going with all the equipment, they going with all the things that God blessed them with, and the army is coming behind them with resolution and determination to exterminate them, to wipe them out. You don't have to worry about the host behind you. You don't have to worry about the purposes and the intentions of those that are before you. Ah, but just keep marching forward. Just keep pushing forward. Just keep driving forward. When Moses touched the water, the sea parted on either side. And they went through, not just going through, but they went through a dry ground. The water dried up completely. And they were going through looking up. Oh my God, feed up on feed. Pass a hundred feet high or more. Water piled up. Rocks are the frozen before them. And they go through. And they go with an expedition. What if the water collapses? What if, what if, what if? My God. And when they were about to exit, they said, get out of that water. Something happened. Because the army had encroached upon them. And they saw them going up, and they entered into the water, and they got into a place, uh, and they were hastening with their chariots, uh, and they were coming down and then to cut them off. Uh, and then God started to do another miracle. Somebody say another miracle. Another miracle. Imagine, use your mind's eye for a moment. Uh, imagine them in front, uh, and the water piled up higher. And when God, what God had used to deliver him, uh, deliver them, uh, the enemy was now using it to get behind them, to destroy them. But God always has a separation. Are you hearing me? God always says to the enemy, there's a term we use. It's called they plus ultra. N-E-P-L-U-S-U-N-T-R-A. And it means thus far and no further. Thus far and no further. Hallelujah. You can only come so far. You can hear the, the, the beat of the house. You can see the shining you can smell the intention uh, and you know what God began to do the lead horse uh, God coming off with water and the water began to roll back from there and roll back from there and then the water came up behind them uh, and boxed them in uh, and hit them in uh, and the water began to rise uh, and horses and men uh, uh, were drunk in the sea and there we have the sun uh, the horse and the rain you to know, the enemy 
they feel he has you. Buxton has you. Covered him. That's the end of the line. Hallelujah. The marriage is going to be broken. You're going to lose something that you slave for all your life. Lost your job. Then he says that's the end of it. You are able to feed yourself or feed your family. And things have turned bad. But I want you to know that God protects you. God protects you. And God has a way of cutting the enemy off. He can come close, but he cannot touch you. Are you hearing me this morning? The enemy can come close, but he cannot touch you. Oh, bless God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So be encouraged this morning. Be encouraged. God is on your side. Very quickly, I want to just spend about 20, 25 minutes at the most. We started last week dealing with the whole question of service as a privilege, not a favor. And we looked at pre-qualification and recruitment. And then we saw that God is the one who chooses us. God chooses us. John 15 and 16, he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. He has divinely selected you. You're not here by chance. God has you to be here. God has purpose for your life. God has designed for your life. And we understand that you are there for his specific purposes. First Corinthians 12 and 18 says that God has set the members in the body as it has pleased them. I'm just rehashing as it were. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 4 to 6, uh, this is what it says from verse 3. Paul is writing to Timothy, his son, his adopted son. Timothy, Timothy has a very colorful history, and we will do well to think about Timothy. First and foremost, he was the son of a mixed parentage. His father was a Roman, and his mother was a Jewish woman. And so he was, as we would say, he was, a, a, as we say, a dogla. Not only in terms of ethnicity, but in terms of cultural upbringing. But his mother was a woman of God. And his grandmother was a woman of great, uh, 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 of great faith in God. And so at uh, one time Paul wrote to Timothy and he says, Remember the unfaith faith that dwelt first uh, in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice. So there was a progression of faith and we will do well to cause our faith to progress to all generations so that they can benefit from it. From it, from it. And, and, and so Timothy, here he is and he speaks of in verse 3, you're suffering along with me as good soldiers of Christ Jesus. He, he is in jail, he is incarcerated uh, and, 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 and the things are not so good. So he says, soldiers don't get tied up in the affairs of civilian life for they cannot please the officer who enlisted them. And, and so we need to understand that we are called to please God. He is the one who enlisted us. And, and uh, so there are a couple of things that we looked at with respect to being enabled and being chosen. One was the, we need to have the correct attitude of uh, you know, obedience and support and submission to the will of God, the attitude of the chosen, and it has to do with your commitment and your salvation, your salvation and commitment to God, and uh, we looked at the whole question that that transcends itself into relationship, and relationship is, is vertical and horizontal, it is you with God, God tabernacling with you, God coming down in you and saving you and delivering you and uh, your relationship with society and with people that you meet on a daily basis, uh, vertical and horizontal. And then he goes into a description of the soul there. And uh, we pick up that description when we look at the word of God in Ephesians 6, 15 to 18. And uh, what is depicted there is that the soul there is well clad. He has a kid. And uh, we, the soldier, before we look at the, what the kit that the soldier wears, we, I, I just want to go back and look at the attitude of the soldier. The soldier, he defends his comrades with his life. He endures hardness. He, he operates under austere condition. Whether it's a snowing, whether it's hot, whatever it is, he endures it. He takes his heel in wherever he is. He can be counted on the good soldier, the faithful soldier, the reliable soldier. 
being observed, he obeys instructions and serves as ordered. That's a good soldier. And he's outfitted. He does not go to war at his own expenses. The government pays for his training and for the supply of his kid for his food. Everything he has is supplied. And the same is true of us who are uh, who are involved with propagating or moving the kingdom forward. God has obligated himself to supply for us and for each and every child of God, I dare say. And so when we look at this kid, he has the helmet of salvation. And I said last week, the helmet of salvation, salvation is a main thing. So the helmet, the helmet covers the head. It protects uh, against, uh, uh, against a sword or so coming down on your head to kill you. Amen. Uh, the, the sword uh, to cut you and uh, to cut you off. Uh, and and uh, it deals with the transformation of the mind. Romans 12 and 1, be not conformed to the word, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Verse 2, that you may know and prove what is the good and the acceptable and the perfect will of God. So there is a choice, there is protection, but it deals with a, a renewing of your mindset, an overhaul of how you think. Your mindset has to do with your skills as set, your mental capacity as how you view things, your whole attitude towards life and to what you are involved in, what you are called to, how you view that thing, the, 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 the dispatch and, and, and the seriousness with which you view that. But it has to do with a transformation of the mind. That's right. Amen. And so the helmet of salvation has to do with your thinking. As a man thinks in his heart, so you see the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The proper, the proper use of the word of God. Wielding the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is your most lethal warfare that you have in you. And that's why you speak the word against whatever comes your way. Because in doing so, what you are doing is that you are wielding your sword. And then it says, having your Lord is good about what truth with a belt, the belt of truth. God has called us uh, to truth. The Bible says, wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth to his neighbor. But this is not just the truth as it relates to conversation, but truth that is internal, truth that is, to use this word that is invasive, invasive truth that, that is deeply etched into the psyche of your soul. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And because of your relationship with God, truth is one of your bedrocks, one of your foundation upon which your life is established. And not just any type of truth, but reveal truth through the word of God, where God shows you what he wants you to do, shows you where he wants you to go, and you have the assurance that God is with you. There is a truth that surfaces in your life that says God has it under control in spite of what I'm going through, that God is still there with me. And then the shield of faith. The Bible says without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So that has to do with expectation. It has to do with defense against the fiery darts of the enemy. It says take the shield of faith by which you will be able to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. The shield to which I refer in the Roman sign, it was doused. It was covered by a skin, a skin of leather and they would normally use fiery arrows uh, and, and in order to, to burn ranks uh, because the, the archers or those who are uh, carrying arrows they would be ranks and they would be closely put together and so the archers uh, from the opponent uh, they would uh, shoot fiery arrows at them because if they caught one the fire will catch them and then there will be a breaking up and so they will be able to come in easily and that's why with the shield of faith it has to do with the whole question of unity of purpose uh, and locking together and stay close together that even though the arrows are coming there there is a protection across the board and it speaks of the home the protection of the shield of faith it speaks about the church it speaks about wherever you are you better get the shield of faith up and stay put stay locked in uh, with whatever needs to be defended it might be morality it might be your ethical values whatever it is uh, but keep it locked on are you hearing me this morning so that there can be no walls broken down, there can be no penetration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Then uh, the shoes of peace, uh, the peace of comfort, because you, you have to chat over different terrain. Uh, and sometimes uh, when you talk about walking, you get weary. The Bible says, us, They that wait upon the Lord shall do what? Shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and shall not faint. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, because you are going to have to take territory. And in taking territory, it might sound nice. Uh, it my son pleasant and, and adventurous, but there is effort and energy that has to be employed. Come on, uh, you've got to go through some hard things. Uh, and the word of God says that's okay because every foot of ground that the soul of your future tread upon, God has given it to you. Uh, I don't know where you are in terms of you walking, uh, uh, but if you have on the shoes of peace, uh, Jesus said, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives give by you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Hallelujah, God has your back. Are you hearing me? The enemy will come against you one way, but will flee before you seven ways. The Bible says he's your rear guard. He's your rear reward. He's the one who is the back of you, fighting for you. He's your woman Sabaoth. He's your man of war. God is battling for you, giving you strategies, empowering you, positioning you, protecting you. It's okay to walk. Sometimes you're weary in your walk, battling all sorts of things that will come against you in the course of your daily living. Sometimes it's internal, right within your home. And sometimes uh, it's right Right within a family, sometimes uh, it's right in your office, right on each other. Sometimes uh, it's right within your community, very close to you. They hate you for no reason at all, but keep on walking. Uh, do we walk by faith and not by sight? Uh, walk in the spirit uh, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, somebody has to keep on walking. Uh, the Bible says, walk worthy of the vocation where it's your call. Uh, and then keep it walking, God preserves you with his peace. And the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus the Christ. Shoes of peace is very important. There's some other things with respect to the soul in. The soul in that comes a point in time after he's equipped and we, he's well equipped with all that is required and he understands his purpose and he is in his rank and what have you. Sometimes there is what we call a parade. Somebody say parade. Those persons who are involved in the police and military thing, you know what parade and you know what happens in parade. When you show up a parade, everything you are on show. It is time to check your kit. It is time to check your gear. The boots has to be shining. You better have your hair well cut. Come on, uh, I've not been in the military, but I've read enough, and I think I know enough uh, to be able to tell you, uh, amen, that sometimes some people get cussed out uh, for having a uniform in the wrong place. Come on, somebody. I'm doing all kinds of things. Are you hearing me? You can't go in there anyhow. You have to be well put together. Amen. Because I'm not only that in the parade, there's what you call the parade grounds, uh, which is like a master point. Uh. What's a master point? A master point is a place where you rally, where you assemble. If there is disaster, this is the place that we go to. The parade uh, gives you the idea of entrenching unity and reminding you of what you call to. How many of you dare you lump together? Ah, uh, the master point also the parade. In first Corinthians 4. And eight. The Bible says, if the trumpet gives an uncertain song, who shall prepare himself to battle? When they hear that trumpet, so that, that, another trumpet, uh, come on, but when you hear that trumpet, uh, you've got to go where the sound of the trumpet is. Uh, is there somebody hearing the trumpet of God uh, that calls them to a place of holiness, uh, that calls them to a place of hope, uh, that calls them to dig their heels in uh, and say, come here, you've got the moral support. You've got the ideological support. You've got all the support that you need right here. You come right here and let's assemble here because I'm with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you, but I will be with you all the days of your life. I will be with you through your problem. I will be with you through your trouble. I will be with you through your trouble. Don't go walking all over the place. Don't go running all over the place. Don't go asking this one for prayer and that one for prayer. Running from this church to our next church and all over the place. 
sister, you're going to get struggled, you're going to get overrun, and you're going to get confused by the enemy. But stay in the parade grounds. Get to the place of master. Get to the place where the voice of God is being released. And stay put and see God having you. Come on. Sometimes you need to move. Sometimes you need to change direction. And you need to hear God's voice because God said, come over here. I want you here. I want you to position here because I'm getting ready for a different work in your life. But you better stay put. Mm. Hallelujah. So, with respect to the parade, hallelujah, it, 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 it speaks of being in the correct place at the correct time. And then, we don't like to deal with this, but they are, especially with the army, those who do not line up with proper authority and they go aloud, A-W-O-L, when they are caught, they are caught martial. And when they go, when they go awry, they, they are confined to barracks. Uh, and sometimes many of them go to jail. In some armies, uh, they are immediately executed. Because the whole question of brotherhood uh, has been violated. The question of brotherhood is violated. And so they are court martial. They'll be jailed or suffer some form of a punishment that is deemed to be appropriate for the crime that was committed because of ranks have been broken. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. And so it's important as we speak of our ranks and the masters. You put the scripture up on the board, Hebrews 10, 25, and just going to quote the King James. It says that we should not, not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So much the more. Somebody say, so much the more. In Hebrews 10, 13, it says, exhort one another daily and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Hebrews 10, 25, Hebrews 3, 13, put it on the wall. Hebrews 3, 13. Hallelujah. You all said I would put my trust in him. That's 3, 13, that's not 3, 13. 3, 13. Thank you, Jesus. You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. Go on, verse 14. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share all that belongs to Christ. So, so we dig our heels in to receive the benefit. And so when it comes to the house of God, may I say this morning, you need to make dedicated time for the house of God. I heard Joyce Maya say, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday, she said that church is not a Sunday event. It is not a one-off event. But you come to church generally on a Sunday, that's the primary day here, so that you can be filled, so that you can be fed, so that you can go to your different service stations and execute the plan of God for wherever you are positioned. If you're a teacher in the school, you execute God's plan by allowing your life and your witness to come to bear on the children that you teach, wherever you're working, in medicine, in health, whether in industry, wherever you are, you bring God's flavor to bear on that place. And so when we come into the house of God, we must understand that we are coming not because we are forced to. And so it's important that you make special time for God. Jesus put it this way. He says, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar and unto God the things that are God. And sometimes to be in church, you have to make sacrifices. And sometimes you have to work through things. Uh, all kinds of things that uh, uh, will work against you. You know, recently somebody called me and said, Pastor, I need your help. I need your help every time I try to get up to go to church, something holds me back. And you know what it is? It is because the enemy is working to keep you away from getting into the place of truth uh, and the holy bondage. 
I said in the name of Jesus, I break that thing off your life and I command that devil to loose you and go and break the enemy's power. Come on, you've got to be determined in your mind and your hands. Sometimes you've got to push through. Sometimes you have to lay aside things. You have to leave some things behind because this is important to you. My God, I guess I love to see you as a pastor. Pastors love to see people come and, and, and to worship her. But sometimes you've got to press your way through. Sometimes you might not even have food at home. Sometimes you may not even have the proper clothing. And you're wearing one dress or one pants over and over. But keep going. Come on. Keep coming. Keep trusting God. See God make that thing for you. See God make that way for you. Don't sit back easy. The Bible says, Woe to those that sit at ease in Zion. Don't sit easy. Come on. Don't give yourself an excuse not to come. Because the enemy will tell you all kinds of things. You're tired. And certainly I'm not saying to fall down. Man. That's not what I'm talking about. Amen. But there are things that the enemy will put in your way to stop you from coming into the house of God. Hallelujah. You've got to make up your mind that this is the day that the Lord has made. God has given me an opportunity to get into his house and come and hide your hell water. I'm going there and nothing shall hinder me. I am going no matter what. I know, yes I know, that the entire try as you may, you may not be able to make it. And that's okay. But at least you try. Come on. And the next time will be better. Hallelujah. Not forsaking the assembling ourselves together as the man of manner of some is, but exhorting one another daily and so much the more as you see the day approaching. So you've got to make dedicated time. You have got to have your own master, your master point in your home, whether it be in a bedroom or some place that you have allocated or set aside to pray. Just don't get up. Jump up off of your bed and do what you have to do and come to church. Make sure you spend some time in prayer. Amen. Lord, I'm going to the house of God this morning. I'm being practical this morning. I'm going to your house, Lord, and I want to spend time in prayer. What you need to do when you get up, you get you put on some gospel music. You know, I have this way. Sometimes you get up and, and put on the television in different rooms and what have you. And, and, and just have the word going through the house. Just have the word, just have worship going through the house and flooding the place with worship and, and getting in that atmosphere. And, and I know it can be stressful, especially with ladies and morning and, and having to cook and to see our children and, and what have you. Amen. It, it can be difficult. I understand that. But there is something about good gospel music. Uh, it, it has a way of liberating. It has a way of soothing. It has a way of strengthening. It has a way of putting you in, uh, in good form, so to speak. And, and you know, you look at music. The Bible tells us David was a young boy. They call him a shepherd boy. He was not only shepherd and alone. That was his primary responsibility there as a young teenager. But in the midst of that, he became a psalmist. That is where he hold that. He fell up and sharpened his writing skills uh, for songs and psalms uh, that we are still singing today and chords that we are still uh, listening to, to today. As a little boy, come on something. Because where you are in your lonely place, where you are in your forbidden place, uh, where you are in your broken place, uh, it is preparing you and sharpening you and empowering you and wiring you, come on, uh, for the place of elevation that God is going to bring you to. I believe this morning uh, that as a child of God, every experience that God causes you to go through, everything that he allows you to experience, uh, hallelujah, God allows it so that it can be used. Uh, it can be used uh, for ministry later on. Uh, and not only in the church, uh, but in your life, some skill, uh, some ability that he has deposited within you. It may not be the primary thing, uh, but sometimes it is the thing that rescues you. Uh, when what you've been looking for Oh, that ship collapses and what have you. But you understand uh, that there is something inside of me that God is saying, uh, I want you to do this and I want you to do that. And that thing that God gives birth to, uh, as you listen to him, uh, it causes uh, the manifestation uh, as you begin to do what you're supposed to do and utilize that gift and that ability. You realize uh, that there was money all the time lying on the inside. Uh, that there were opportunities all the time lying on the inside. Uh, that you could cook, that you could bake. Uh, 
that you can so come on uh, that you can uh, ca you can ca do consultation that there's a skill in you that goes beyond where you are wherever you are it might not be immediate evidence uh, but you might be called to do something uh, and when you ask yourself never did that but it comes out naturally because there was a deposit uh, you were wired for life uh, and where you are in life God just brings that thing out To have a place for God yes. in your house. To seek God's face. Read the word. Just don't jump up and go there, hopefully. <laughs> Hallelujah. And come on your way to church. Bless God that that was a below the, below the color of our <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody say bless the Lord. Yes. So when we come to church, we need to understand that everyone has a role. Everyone has a role in church. Even your praise and your worship has a role. You know, Pastor Nola was telling me uh, yesterday, said, met somebody and the person told her, tapping into all I stream, says, oh my God, that worship was so dynamic. God really used that individual in such a special way. And sometimes you never know the kind of impact that you are having in your environment and, and, and now across the nations of the earth. Are you hearing me? You never know. And that's why you always have to keep, put your best foot forward. I mean, you have to develop yourself in such a way, Lord, in the midst of what I'm going through, I'm here. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12 and, 13, 12 and 18 that, that we are members together in the house of God. We feed off of each other. Amen. Just you being here, just the praise, just the worship, just how you look. Come on. Hallelujah. And, and, and people look at that and, and, and we are smiling and what have you. People look at that and people feed off that. You can never tell what Holy Spirit uses. I am always amazed with Holy Spirit and how he does things. And, and, and I want to say something, this is not about me, but, but this just came back to me. I may have shared this before. I'm preaching in an international conference in the United States, and, and, and uh, the, the theme the theme of the, the conference, God allows me, I feel a leading to move away from the theme in terms of, I'm doing something like a plenary session, which is an address to, to leaders and things and what have you. And I'm moving away from the theme. And, and, and I, I find this thing very unusual. And I begin to, to deal with, with science and, 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 and use a, a scientific example or something. And after, after the meeting, after the meeting, here comes one of the hierarchy board members of the organization. And uh, the person is a doctor of mathematics who at that time ran the entire program for the city of Chicago in the United States and was connected to the board of the United States at that point in time. He comes to me and says, Pastor, thank you. I got the answer. When you touch that thing, Pastor, I got the answer. And I'm looking at Woo! PhD in maths. I got the answer. Not because I'm brilliant, but because God wants to invest it. So the desire in me. So you never know. Your presence is always important. Oh, bless God. Let me, let me just run on. So it says that God has set the members. I like the term set. Set means I have positioned you here. Set doesn't mean immobility that I can't move. But set means that I have called you. I have appointed you. I have chosen you. I have assigned you. I have authenticated you. Authentication means the stamp of approval is upon you. You may have been ordained, or you may have been specifically called and charged with a responsibility. There is an authentication of your life. God has set the members in the body as it has pleased.
system that hasn't pleased us. Uh, but God will show the agency and the instrument of leadership to put people in different positions. Come on. And the man says, God has sent the members. Uh, so what has he done? Sent the members, the people in the body as it has pleased him. And that speaks of unity and plurality. Unity and plurality. Even though we are many members, the Bible says we are one body. Unity and plurality. There is no need to be jealous of another one. Hallelujah. Because this one could preach, and that one could sing, and that one could dance, and that one is good in the arts. Come on. And that one has a different gift. No, 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 no. Unity and plurality. That the members of the body will benefit. Ah, oh, you might be a hand, you might be a foot, you might be an eye, come on, but we are we we are linked together. The hand can't say to the eye, I have no need of you. If the hand say, get out of the way, I don't want to see what do you think will happen then? That hand will end up touching some things that will cause some real problems. Some of you thinking about what that hand can touch. Oh God. So there is unity and plurality. Multiple functions to achieve a common purpose or objective. It speaks of collaboration and then submission. Following God's plan. Working according to God's plan. Somebody say bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And let me let me just uh, I want to come in and close on this one. We all have a role to play. We understand that. We all have a role to play. In the process of that role, remember God has set the members in the body, but they are what we call talents. Matthew 25, 14 to 30. The Bible talks about the good man distributing talents to one person five, to another two, to another one. Those of you mathematically inclined, you know one, five eats, one and two eats, one quarter, and one, one eat. So there is a disparity. But the Bible says he gave the talents according to the ability. The ability is determined by what that person was wired for. Are you following me? What that person, because on the face of it, it seems to be unfair. That this one gets five eighths, another one gets two eighths or a quarter, and one only gets a little sliver one eighth. That seems to be unfair. But God who looks at the hearts, God knows how to do what you are wired for. And the thing is to maximize your talent, to use it for the glory of God. That is what God is looking for. And it is based on that that you are going to be judged. So I'm not going to go into reading the passage per se, but he gave to one five. And one translation says five. 500 gold coins, another one, 500 silver coins, whatever it is, it was money. And it was money to last over a good period of time. And so what God does, what God does is that he deposits gifts within us so that it can be used, uh, to use it uh, uh, to loosely, commercially, so as to produce gain, to redound it to the benefit of the overall community. So if you are a five talent, it means that God has placed gifts and skills and deposits within you that will be used or that will return as you use it to benefit the community, not only in church but on the outside also. And if you have two eights or a quarter, it means that you are not at the same level. You may not be recognized at the same level, but you are at the level that God has you to minister to people at that level where you are, at the two eights or quarter level. Because everybody cannot be at the five eights level. Come on, there's the head, there's the thorax, and there are the feet. Come on, at different places, different positions. The key is that you function at maximum capacity. Wherever God has placed you. 
And then the one eight level, the one eight level is that God looks at the person and sees that that person is not all that industrious. And there's the one that puts it to feel that he's overloaded or what have you. But God gives them enough. The one, the one talent, one eight. And that one eight is able to minister to a pool of people. And if we translate to society, from a societal standpoint, the five will be those who have a greater reach to touch the upper echelon of society. Governments and, and ministries that come down in business and, and what have you that come down the line. Government and education and, 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 and business and entrepreneurship and, and, and scholarliness and, and sport and culture and those middle of the road, the, 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 the middle of the road, the, the two ends of the quarter. I would have to deal with people the everyday course of life. You understand what I mean? Things that are across the board. Uh, you, you need to eat across the board. Recreation and pleasure, like sports and culture, and all of these type of things, middle of the road is still important because you can run it, you can control the economic landscape for us up there, but you've got to find place in the middle of the road. We talk of middle income to enjoy yourself. Are you following me? And, and, and to, to do things that will redound to society or your community or your family. But then the one eight is also important. It deals with those that we refer to as the, the dumb cast or the dumb trunk or the father of this society to be able to reach out to touch them. And sometimes they are the hardest to reach. Woo, you're not hearing me? Sometimes people who have been dumb, they're the hardest to reach. And you know why? They have been battered so much, they have been abused so much, they have been violated so much, they have been talked down to so much, you will never come to anything, you don't have anything, you have no education, you're poor, you come from a poor background, look at what is going on, and people they feel they're right there at the bottom of the ladder, but it doesn't matter where you are in society, God has given you something to operate where you are, and that thing, as small as it is, God has a way of using that thing and multiplying that thing so that you can be a benefit to wider society. In fact, I dare say, God uses that person that was low down, that recognized the skill and the gift that God gave them, and sometimes they just stumble upon it because they're able to do something and somebody sees them and says, you could do that, and they call them, hallelujah, and they, they, make, a, they make an industry out of them, and that they end up going up, come on in life, because the Bible says here, this, he listed me out of the dumb hill and sets them among princes, not princesses, P-R-I-N-C-E-S, because they have the air apparent the throne and elevation, come on, this is not the put on ladies, I believe in ladies, function in every sector of society, so don't, don't give me any bad mail, come on, but he lists them among, the sets them among princes, even the princes of his people, God takes these people who are the doctrine of society and uses them to bless them in the society right where they are and people are left to say but how did he get there how did she get there you know who is their parents you know who is that one's father you know who is that one's mother you know where that person you know what they used to do amen my god you know where they used to live you know you know you know you know hallelujah but it's no longer you know you see do you see what is happening do you see what god has done do you see how god has changed things Oh God, help us here today. Now we'll be closing on this with the one talent. So the one with five got five. Multiplication, the one with two got two others. Multiplication, God is a hundredfold person. God is never short. And you know this morning, you know what I mean? And I was, in a sense, ministering to myself. And I thought of people praying and asking God to do something for them. And they don't let me someone write in a message, God, I don't want much, you know. All I want is just enough to do so and so. That's an insult to God. Some of you may pray that prayer, stop doing that. Because God is not limited in resources. Peter tells us, and I'm getting ready to close. Peter tells us that, what's the scripture? 
lost the scripture when he got into it. But basically, what he's saying in First Peter one and four and First Peter one and four, but First Peter one and four, they go out, please quickly. Thank you, Jesus. And we have an inheritance. Okay, let me read the and then see, and then I'll quote the the king sheet. And we have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept. I want you to follow this. Oh, yes. And we have a what? Priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept in heaven for who? Where is it? Kept it. The term we use in finance is an escrow. It is held in escrow. That is kept in heaven for you. Pure and somebody say good money. Good money. Not bad money. Not bad. I don't know what you feel as bad money, money is money. I just it. Pure and undefiled. But I understand what you mean. The means by which we use to accomplish might not be bad money in the sense that it's something that uh, debases you as a person and runs contrary to good norms. Pure and undefiled. Here it is. Beyond the reach of change and decay. Oh, yeah. 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 So, in the King it says, we have an inheritance which is incorruptible and undefiled and faded not away, reserved in heaven. Where is it? Reserved. Where do you get, where do you get reserves? In the central bank. And where is that? That is the place from which all monetary trans uh, transactions are endorsed and released. God is never short. And God will supply every need. Philippians 4.19 My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. And I'm getting ready to come in here. So the talents, that's important. What happened to the guy with one talent? I said, you all have a role. He says, no. Let me marry this thing. Because I know the master is a hard man. He's over demanding. This man is asking to do something that is unreasonable, illogical. That man don't have a heart at all. And not only that, you have to meet schedules and guidelines too. Woo! This place is real quiet. That is how we view this master. But the master was purpose driven. The master understood that you could not continue to operate at infinitum. That there was going to be a time of accountability. And you only have so much time to do what you are called to do. And you cannot use excuses for not using what you have been downloaded with. It might be small, but use it. And what happened? He eventually lost it and was banished from the presence of the master. That seems to be very callous minded on the part of the master. After all, he had a good excuse. I was frightened. I didn't want to do anything, but chance they would laugh at me. And then you're looking for profits. Where you didn't make any profits. Let me tell you something. When you come in the house of God, you're not serving the pastor. You're not even, you're serving God, but you're serving yourself. Why oh, you didn't get that? He said the master wanted profit where he didn't put. But the master knew he within that one talent, there was the deposit of increase in that. That if he had only invested it, if he had only used it, if he had only spoken to that individual, if he had only gone for that job and taken that job, that they call a low income job. Oh, yeah. God knows he would have been able to take the experience that he would have gained in that job to move him to another job. Oh, yeah. But he saw it as being a put down oh, yeah. where he was and left it there. He had like my message, oh, they give me and they give the others so much. 
But he knew in that one seed there was enough deposited in that to take it up the corporate ladder, not just to come up and get a good employment, but to take it up the corporate ladder to be the CEO or the CEO of the corporation, to own his own business. How many have started with seemingly nothing at all? And today, they are owners of corporation because when God gives you the talent, there is something that touches your mind and your mind begins to spin ideas and you begin to use what God has given you to give birth, to give life to those ideas and eventually God brings you out. Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook, he dropped out of, a, 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 of college. And where is he today? He controls a significant portion of the global economy. YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. What else? Huh? Oh, oh, I don't even know that. And now they have to put strictures on him because they say he has too much power and controls too much and is regulating the minds and people across the world. I'm listening to BBC around 4 o'clock this morning and in India there are some things that they're doing with the WhatsApp and what have you and they're kicking against it because it is too much of control over the society and people are kicking back now because they realize that this man is controlling things. Where did he start? With an idea. Did, you, did he see millions? No, but there was something in his heart that says this is a good idea. And in the college, library started up Facebook right in school and college there. It started as a little program and it has mushroomed into one of this. And I tell you, he's going to keep on buying. Right. So I close on this note. In Acts chapter 3. There's a lame man outside the temple gate, left the bed. There is no expectation of change due to his physical deformity. He's in the church precincts, not going in, speaking of not fully surrendering, to receive his breakthrough, confined by social disqualification. It was illegal for him to enter the temple. He was considered defiled. But Jesus healed him through Peter's word. Jesus healed him. Silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have, we give to you. And Peter got a vision where he saw a great sheep let down by the four corners of the earth and all manner of unclean animals that the Jews were not supposed to eat. And the boy spoke from man and says, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Says, Not so, Lord, for I've never eaten anything common or unclean. Double three times, and then the boy says, What I've created, don't go and come and unclean. Because sometimes God is taking you to a different place to do something that society said cannot be done or should not be done. And so, what God is saying in that is that there is no social or economic declassification or disqualification. You're not disqualified on the basis of gender or ethnicity or anything like that. So whatever you have, wherever you are, that man in the temple was like the one talent. He knew to bed, but at least he was in the correct place. And being in the correct place, he had the correct encounter with Peter there, responded and got delivered. The unfortunate thing is that sometimes people prefer to stay in the zone of the handout. Yeah. And you must stick within your mind wherever you are. See yourself out of your present predicament wherever you are. Especially if it is a broken place. Especially if it's a low place. See yourself. Let me tell you something. I see myself. Amen, my God. And if I were to tell you where I see myself, you, some of you would perhaps would probably laugh your heads off. Hallelujah. But I give birth to that thing that I release from my mouth on a daily basis. And can I tell you, amen, what I'm experiencing ah, is a result of things that I spoke many years ago when I could not even see where I am now. Hallelujah. But God honored my words. Come on, God honored my words. And God brought it to pass. And I said, the best is yet to come. Are you hearing me? The best for my children.
generation only the best for my family the best in life is yet to come because you've got to open your mouth and speak yesterday I was in the day before yesterday I was talking to a professional at the top of his field and he said he said pastor he's a Christian he said pastor he had this business transaction the thing and he prayed and he says Lord if you want me to get this business then you will let me get the business if not let the other person do, do, uh, get it he said the Holy Spirit rebuked him instantly and the Holy Spirit said to him what kind of prayer pray it is what you say you will get and he repented because the, the rival was from another big organization that was trying to take this business that he had now. He says, Lord, I claim it in Jesus' name. You've got to be able to go to where God wants you to go. Stop settling for dreams. Understand that you are a servant of God. And last note, was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? I went to the laundry. Francis Trim went to the laundry to drop some clothing off. No, we don't do all our clothes in the laundry. Some we do. <laughs> and uh, a young man came and was knocking on my window. I know he's a young man because I saw him around, but now he's drunk, has devastated his life. Knocks at the window and so I'm ignoring him. Because I'm not giving him any money and knocks at any outside with the summer inside that. So we be like that. So I warm the window down and I said, um, what do you want to say? Give him five dollars. I want to buy something to eat. I said, I'm not giving you no money. You don't want any money. You want money to buy, buy drugs. I'm not giving you. No, no, no. Um, uh, I will get something to eat because I have a five dollar put up with put up with it. I said, let me see your five dollars. He went to his pocket and took out four single dollars. <laughs> put it back. I said, here what? You see that store next door? You see that, that restaurant next door? Go there and call for a roti. And I'm going to buy the roti for you. And, and, and he stopped and he says, um, uh, uh, I, I, I want some chicken, fried chicken. I, I don't eat the roti, I need the fried chicken. <laughs> I said, you're not hungry. <laughs> you want my money, I'm done for you. He said, oh, 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 oh. All right, all right, I'm good, all right, I'm good. <laughs> you feel a hungry man will leave a roti at a top restaurant and go and say, you're a... And the first thing he said, I have to buy it for myself. And what I'm saying, you have to learn to listen. Are you hearing me? Not everybody you can help. Not everybody you should help. Because by releasing in some people's life, you're creating problems for them and for society. Father, we thank you today. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Lord, as we look at this whole thing, servants, as servants, Lord, we are called to do your bidding. Service is a privilege, Lord. It is not a favor. Cause us to see within ourselves and to be thankful to you for the privilege which you have endowed us. Touch your people today and let each person recognize that you are pursuing their needs and their best interests and have your way today in Jesus' name. God bless you.